Hello, welcome back. Today's video, we're going to start off with some caravan. <clears throat> and I'm going to start showing some, some of more of the uh, progressive type records that I've got in my collection. I'm going to go through some of that stuff. And uh, we're going to start off with caravan. This is your Canterbury scene right here. And this is uh, Waterloo Lily. This is Japan pressing. And it comes with a nice poster in here, insert, and it's on the Durham label. That's the original label for this year, 1972. Comes with a nice insert, <clears throat> Japanese and English lyrics on the inside, and then on the outside they have Waterloo Lily. So that's a nice item. <clears throat> Next up is uh, Caravan in the Land of Gray and Pink. And now, I used to own this on a, a UK first press, but it had some, you know, it's one of those records you get, excellent condition, and yeah, no, it's like VG condition, maybe VG, a good, nice VG, but it's not excellent, or it's not the type of condition I want my records in. But it played pretty good and uh, had good fidelity on it. I had it for probably 20 something plus years. And then as I was going through the record collection saying, you know what, I need to get a better record of that, of that land of gray and pink. Cause it's a really, really good record. I really like it. So I happened to find this on Discogs a few years ago, a number of years back. And uh, it's very cool. It comes on gray and pink vinyl. And originally now, this was a single record, okay, but they reissued it, and they made it a gatefold, and it's a double LP, okay? So, a lot of times what they'll do on these, why they make a lot of these records two LPs, and some of them back on black records I got are two LPs as well, is because the closer you get to the center of this label, the harder it is for the uh, your cartridge for your needle to track the record because as it's going around here at the same speed it's going around here this is a lot more congested you don't have as much material here on as in a in a one revolution as you do out here in one revolution so this is almost it's like a 45 rpm a lot of a lot of space a lot of from you know you've got a lot of space to put it in but as it gets here it's everything's getting more compressed more compressed more compacted and there's a lot more information in a smaller amount of space so you'll notice a lot of those uh, 45 rpm records and such where they're putting it on two or three four sides they only a lot of times record up to about halfway in the record maybe a little bit more they're not getting anywhere near the near here because they want it it's an audiophile record they want it to your your to track the best they can because they're putting a lot of high energy in those records, and they know if the closer they're getting here, the harder it is going to be to track that, and so that's why they put some of these records on a two LP. It's better for fidelity, and this record when I compared it to the UK original pressing, this one sounded better, so. It's a win-win. It's a really nice package and it sounded better than the UK original pressing. Then we have Caravan. I always thought this was a pretty wild, uh, you probably all know what the title of this record is, but I'll read it to y'all. If, if I could do it all over again, I'd do it all over you. What? Yeah, that's the name of the record. And this is a US original promo got the sticker on there from the old days they used to put a promo sticker on there and of course now this is on a caravan it's on a blue London label and uh, very very nice record very good sounding record um, I don't know it's got the year 1970 Decca London still got the old you know, inner sleeve, the original inner sleeve from the day. 
got a bunch of Engelbert Humperdinck on here and Tom Jones and yeah lots of that you know oh it does have a Rolling Stones record on here though one record we what we'd like yeah this is a nice progressive music on here Drums, congas, bongos, cymbals, finger cymbals, bass guitar, tambourine, hedge clippers, electric, string electric guitars, string acoustic guitars, uh, organ, piano, harpsichord, sax, flute. Yeah, lots of nice progressive stuff on there. And here is a original, this is her first record from 1969. And this is an original German pressing from 1969. And it's on the MGM label. And it says here, manufactured and distributed by Polydor Records for MGM. And again, this is a, this is a really good record here too. Nice progressive music. Caravan, self-titled. Of course, the other ones they have a different cover. This is the only I, I have, the only time I've seen this cover. The, it, the other, like the UK press, has a different cover than this. Okay, now we're going to move on to Curved Air. This is Air Cut, and this is on the Japanese original pressing. Now this one I bought originally in 1974 on the Warner Brother label. When I lived in Winnipeg, and it did have good sound. You know, Warner Brother Records, they had good sound on them. I'm not sure who was mastering the records. I probably need to look, find out about that. But back in the day in the 70s, Warner Brothers had good sound on their records. And this is a gatefold. Gatefold record. And, uh,. So a lot of good music, a lot of progressive music. Again, this lady that in the front here in the middle. She's the lead singer, and she also plays electric violin, and she does a phenomenal job of it. And the guitarist on here is phenomenal. A lot of great guitar work, and they've got a great keyboard. A lot of a lot of keyboards on here too, as well as. Let's see if it says anything on here: guitar, vocals, piano, organ, percussion, uh, synthesizer, electric piano, organ bass guitar, percussion. So that's kind of it. Synthesizer, vocal, percussion, vocals, yeah. flute, violin, good stuff. And this is Curved Air's second LP. And this is on a Japanese original. This is like a super, really super hard record to find. It's the only one I ever saw. And I never had, I didn't have it, so I picked it up. And those are the, the curved air records that I have currently. I've had a few other ones, but these are the ones that we made and stayed in the collection. Now, here's one of my favorite records, Camel Mirage. And I've had a few of these Japanese presses until I finally found an original. You know, once you look and you learn. Yeah, I bought a reissue. And of course, I bought this when it came out in 74. I bought it brand new. And this is on the Durham label from, it should be 74, I believe. Yeah, 74, when I bought the record. And this is on the Japanese original, and now really thin. It's like a UK press, how thin the cover is. Back in the early days, in those originals, the covers weren't thick. It wasn't until like 75, 76, where the Japanese really started putting those super thick covers on their records. And this is a really good progressive record. Again, lots of keyboards, lots of good guitar, lots of great singing. And the sound on this one now is really, really good. Phenomenal sounding record on this first edition Japanese press. Then we've got Mood Madness. Moon Madness Camel, and uh, I used to 
for years I had an original UK press of this and it had a textured cover and it was really nice really nice record but I come across this Japanese pressing of this record and so I decided to get this one and I compared them and I thought this sounded a little bit better than that original UK press so I've got this one and it comes with a little kind of a little book in here and uh, a lot of mostly all Japanese writing except for the back page has some uh, English lyrics in it a couple pictures of the band here Again, a lot of keyboards, good singing, a lot of guitars, good stuff. And this is their first LP on a first press, Japanese. And this is um, from 73, and it's on the MCA Black Rainbow label from 73. That would be the proper label for that, 73 MCA. This is on MCA. The other ones are at Durham. Okay. Up next, Atomic Rooster. Death Walks Behind You. Now this is one of those Akarma reissues that I've got. You know, Akarma, if you haven't got any of them, they're covers. They're made in Italy and their covers are super thick. That's the best thing that this the Karma label does. They just have really, really super thick covers. And of course, uh, you know me, I leave the shrink on them. Virgin vinyl pressing, 180 gram, heavy quality sleeves. They have heavy quality sleeves all right. And I bought this a number of years ago. And uh, here's the Karma label. And this is a really good record. Atomic Rooster. This is their first one, I believe. Hard to get in some of these jokers. Okay. Atomic Rooster. This one is, I believe, a 73 Canadian or domestic pressing on the butterfly label, or the moth label, I guess you'd call it, on Electra Records. Another really good Atomic Rooster record. Yeah, try to find a Japanese press or UK or something of this record. Very, very hard to do. Now here's In Hearing Of, another good Atomic Rooster record. And uh, this is a, another Canadian press, original, on the Moth label again from 71 and now somebody did reissue this record a number of years back and I was thinking of picking it up because this one is in really really nice condition but there was some reason I was thinking maybe I should try to get a re that reissue that's one I have and here is Atomic Rooster This is got Carl Palmer on it, Vincent Crane, and Nick Graham. That's when Carl Palmer was with Atomic Rooster. And now this is a UK original press on BC Records. And I bought this at a record convention because this is a super rare record right here. It's really, really hard to get a, get a hold of. And the vinyl is like pristine. Yeah, it's pristine vinyl on there. The record cover itself is not the best. You even got somebody, somebody wrote their name on it up there. But good record, really good record. Okay, we got the next couple records here is Canned Heat. Historical figures. Now these guys really, they're not um, 
they're more of a progressive blues type of a music blues music but this is such a nice record here it's got that that parchment paper textured kind of cover really really nice beautiful condition and this is a fairly old record you can see it's got that old Liberty logo on the top here's the inside the gatefold and this record is from doesn't say but guess what it says made Japan 2,000 yen yeah, so you know that's an old record right there. Here's your Japanese insert. And no year I can see, but we know it's an old record. And the nice thing is, hey, look at that. Japanese promo. It's got those markings on the label again. You can see that. So there's another nice white label promo of a very super rare record. Now it doesn't have the OB, but like I said, sometimes that's not a deal breaker because when they don't have the OB, they're not as expensive. And to try to get a record like this with the OB and a condition it's in and a white label poem and all that, yeah, it's gonna be over $100. And then it's not gonna be in my collection probably. Well, yeah, most likely. Really nice record, canned heat, good record. And then we've got Boogie with canned heat. And now this, I used to have a Canadian press of this record. And this has got the um, On the Road Again. If you're not familiar with canned heat, go on YouTube and look up canned heat On the Road Again. And then you go, oh yeah, I know that song. And it sounds, I went out and what I did, because I love that song so much, you know, this might have been reissued, but I didn't, didn't see it on Rhino or anybody. It's on an original Liberty label. This is the original U.S. press. And it does really sound good on this record. It's got the full fidelity on it. Great sounding record. And then, The Cult... This is another one of those records that I had. I had a Canadian press of it, but I wanted, I had a really nice pristine, it, was, it wasn't a gatefold. And then I saw a gatefold and I said, well, that gatefold, that's the one I want to have. That's the original press. So I picked it up, but it was a little, you know, black covers are so hard to get in. Nice condition. And this one is embossed. It's a textured cover. It's, uh, of course, a Japanese first edition. And that, gatefold I mean that's a really nice picture in there that is really nice I really like that that picture and on, on that inside of that gatefold that's really good and then you've got the record of course on this label from 85 sounds right and then you got it, I won't fold it up, but here's the, a poster in here. Nice big poster of him singing. And then, I've got a couple of 12 inches, She Sells Sanctuary and Love Removal. And that's going to be, conclude the video for today. And thanks for watching.